is there a supernatural dimension? A world beyond the one we know? Is there life after death? Do angels exist? Can our dreams contain messages from heaven? Can we tap into ancient secrets of the supernatural? Are healing miracles real? Sid Roth has spent over 35 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome. I, 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 I have to explain to everyone watching what's going on. I told the audience that if they were loud enough, I wouldn't hear the cues in my ear and I'd have to rely completely on God. And they liked that idea. Can I tell, tell you the truth? I kind of like that idea too. Well, I tell you that my world, it's naturally supernatural. It's the air I breathe. It's the best oxygen in the world. And we have found a key, a supernatural key that the first Jewish believers in the Messiah understood. But sadly, today, Christians have lost this Jewish understanding and have missed the key to the most extraordinary blessings of God in your family, in your health, in your emotions, in every area of your life, and instead settled for many, many curses that were not necessary. We're going to show you how this key opens up the blessing and gets rid of the curses, and you can do it the way the book says you're supposed to do it. There's this ancient Jewish key that will unlock every problem known to mankind. But there are people that are watching right now, and you are hopeless. You have no hope because of the circumstances in your life, and you're going to get the key. Craig Hill, what would you say to someone that is hopeless right now? You know, it's incredible, Sid, that there is hope because of Messiah. And uh, I believe, Sid, as you just uh, alluded to, uh, you have hope because the same thing can happen for you even if uh, you're, you're drowning in debt, you might be sick, you might have a horrible relationship in your family, there's hope for you because the same thing will happen for you. Today, you'll have an encounter with Jesus, the Messiah, that will change everything. We Jewish people are known as a blessed group of people. Yeah. Our nation, Israel, is one of the most blessed nations in the world. Right. I mean, <laughs> the, uh, their currency goes up our, compared to our currency going down. Right. Their real estate just goes up and never stops. They've got some of the greatest inventions in the world. Why is that? You know, I believe that uh, Jewish people understand a principle of blessings, Sid, that uh, most other people don't understand. It's incredible. In the United States, Jewish people account for only 2% of the population. But you know that 40% of the Forbes 400 wealthiest Americans all billionaires are Jewish. Hmm. And it's incredible, actually, 30% of all Nobel Prize winners in science are Jewish. 25% of all Nobel Prize winners overall are Jewish. Why is that? I think the key that they understand is Jewish parents know how to release blessing to their children. And give me, give me your definition of a blessing. Well, I think blessing is speaking into another person's life what God says about them. Actually, the Hebrew word is baruch. Most Jewish people would know that. It's the beginning of many, many prayers right. that are uh, spoken. And that word literally means to kneel in front of someone. But the spiritual connotation is to empower, to prosper. And uh, so blessing is when you speak what God says about another person to them, and it releases something supernatural and empowers them to prosper. Tell me about the 65-year-old that went to 
the 87-year-old for a blessing. Well, there was a man that I knew, a friend of mine, uh, and uh, he realized that his father, deep inside, was like a little child that had never been released. He was angry a lot of the time, spent his lifetime searching for significance, searching for uh, value. And uh, my friend realized my dad, who's going to be 65 years old, has never been blessed. He placed a phone call to his grandfather, who was 87, and said, Grandpa, my dad is about to have his 65th birthday. If I bought you an airline ticket, would you come to our city and uh, lay hands on my dad, look him in the eyes, and release your blessing to him? Well, the 87-year-old dad didn't really understand what was being requested, but he said, I'd love to come and see my, uh, see my family and celebrate my son's 65th birthday. So he did. And then my friend was able to explain to him what he was requesting. And do you know, Sid, that uh, on that 65th birthday, this 87-year-old father released his blessing to his 65-year-old son, and it so radically changed his life. My friend, the grandson, who was 42 at the time, said, do you know after that moment, I looked in my dad's eyes and something had changed. I no longer saw a scared, insecure little boy looking back out through a, a man's eyes, but for the first time, I saw a confident man. And here's the amazing thing. Uh, that 65-year-old man was actually in the midst of a divorce. His wife had left him, was divorcing him. His life was so changed that two weeks later, his wife moved back home and said, I don't know what's happened to him, but this is the man I thought I married 45 years ago. But for 45 years, I've been trying to follow an insecure little boy who's angry and takes it out on me all the time. But now he's completely changed. I don't know what happened, but I don't want to divorce him. I want to live the rest of my life with him. Many of these are doors that were opened unintentionally that pass from generation to generation. So not only are you going to know about the ancient Jewish blessing, but you're going to learn how to close the door on the curses and it doesn't have to go to the next generation. We'll be right back. You want to hear that? We'll be right back. It's supernatural. Call right now to get Craig Hill's anointed book, The Power of a Parent's Blessing, and this two audio CD set, Soaking Up the Father's Blessing. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9182. Through this book, you will discover seven critical times in your children's lives when you should bless them. Understand the supernatural power of the Jewish Sabbath family blessing. Begin to pray supernatural prayers to break every curse over your children's and grandchildren's past. Learn actual prayers of blessing to declare over your children that will transform their health, finances, their relationships, and help them fulfill their God-given destiny and purpose. I've seen marriages healed. I've seen people's physical bodies healed. I've seen people healed on the inside, people that have had a feeling, I, I'm not loved, I have no value, instantaneously changed when they learned how to receive an impartation of the Father's blessing. Through this two-part audio CD set, you will receive an impartation and dynamic insight into the power of the Father's blessings. From 14 highly anointed fathers in the faith, including Sid Roth, Dr. Gary Whetstone, Tony Kemp, Stephen Brooks, Mahesh Chavda, Leif Hetland, and so many more. We've seen it over and over and over again. People's lives radically changed. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9182 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. We now return to It's Supernatural. You know, there seems to be so much division in society. How can we have a culture where children honor parents? Craig, what has happened to that type of culture? Well, I think, Sid, what we have is actually a cycle of cursing and dishonor that goes from one generation to the next to the next, and unfortunately, it intensifies in each generation. So that what happens is parents that have been wounded as children grow up and marry each other. They carry that wounding from their childhood into their marriage, and then you have husbands that wound wives and wives who wound husbands because of cursing, and then when you have a father and mother who are wounded each other in their marriage relationship, they will inadvertently and in unintentionally repeat 
the same type of wounding in the lives of those children and their children then because they've been hurt and wounded and maybe treated with injustice or yelled at, screamed at, disciplined too severely, children in their hearts will dishonor their own parents. And that's a very dangerous thing because we find a scriptural principle in Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 16. It says, honor your father and mother for two reasons, that you may live long and it will go well with you in the land which the Lord your God gives you. And when children make a choice to dishonor their parents, to judge their parents, not forgive their parents, they actually just shortened their life and ensured that it won't go well with them in their own adult life in many areas, sometimes in their own finances, with their own children, in their own marriage, uh, in their own career, in their own physical health. Many of these areas, it does not go well with them and you can trace it right back to a decision they made in their own childhood to judge their parents and dishonor their father and mother in their hearts. Uh, give me an example of a rebellious child. Well, I remember uh, one man shared this story with me that he, uh, he uh, had so much trouble in his own adult life with his own children. He had a 17-year-old son and a 15-year-old daughter. And he said, you know, they are nothing but disrespectful to me and to my wife. Uh, they, they, they're disobedient. They never do what we ask them to do. Uh, they, they use a terrible language toward us. And uh, he said, we don't know what to do. We've tried to discipline them. We've tried to, to chide them. And, and this man uh, came to a particular meeting that we had where he learned this principle of blessing. And he realized, when I was growing up, I was never blessed by my parents. And my response was, in my own heart, I judged my parents, I dishonored them, and I was very rebellious toward my own dad. And, uh, and so uh, he repented before God in that meeting and said, God, forgive me for my own rebellious attitude. The next day, he went to see his dad who was still living and uh, repented before his dad and said, Dad, please forgive me for the rebellious attitude I had in teenage years and, and for never asking you to forgive me and never making that right. I judged you. I let a root of bitterness get in my heart toward you. Please forgive me. Now, he didn't tell his wife or his family what he had done. He said the most amazing thing happened. He said, I changed something in the spirit when I repented and asked my dad to forgive me because he said, when I returned home, the attitude of my own son and daughter had completely changed. And they began to treat me and my wife with respect and with honor. And he said, I didn't even confront them. I didn't even tell them what I'd done. Something changed supernaturally in his spirit and it changed my relationship with my children. You know, many people have made vows in their heart where they've said, I'll never be like my dad. I'll right. never be like my mom. Or I'll never marry a man like my dad. And guess what happens? They they've, do it. They've, that, they've actually released a dynamic in the spirit that, that uh, opens the door for them to, to repeat those patterns. And uh, those can be broken. As a matter of fact, I believe there's someone listening right now. You've done that very thing. You made a vow in your heart. You said, I'll never be like my dad or my mom. And you look at your life and you see qualities that have repeated. You know you can break that right now. Would you just pray this prayer with me? And we're going to break that right now. Just say this, Father God, Father God, I recognize today. I recognize today. I judged my dad. I judged my dad. I didn't forgive him. I didn't forgive him. I dishonored him in my heart. I dishonored him in my heart. And I cut him off. And I cut him off. God, today I repent. God, today I repent. I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to forgive me. Today I forgive my dad. Today I forgive my dad. For the way he wounded me. For the way he wounded me. He can't pay for that. He can't pay for that. Jesus did pay for that. Jesus did pay for that. And I declare today. And I declare today. The blood of Jesus is enough. The blood of Jesus is to enough. To pay for every sin of my father against me to pay for every sin of my father against me. And so today I forgive my father. And today I forgive my father. And God, I ask you to forgive me. And God, I ask you to forgive me. For dishonoring my father. For dishonoring my father. And today I choose to honor him in my heart. And today I choose to honor him in my heart. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, when someone prays prayers such as you teach, they close doors. That's right. And when they close these doors, 
Tell me a list of things that happened to people. I've seen people physically healed. I've seen marriages restored. I've seen a relationship between parents and children, like I just shared, completely restored. Uh, we've seen incredible things happen in people's marriages, in relationships, in work relationships. We've seen uh, people that have not prospered in business and finance have that completely reversed, where people that have just failed and failed and failed over in business uh, all of a sudden have a complete reversal and they begin to prosper in their business. Give me an example. Actually, pray a prayer that a Jewish father might pray over his family well, to give us an idea because, uh, let's face it, Jewish people are so blessed and Christians know the Jewish Messiah and many Christians are not as blessed as many Jewish people that aren't even under the better covenant. Give me an idea of that prayer. That's exactly right. An amazing tradition that Jewish people have, Sid, is of course every Friday night. They gather their family. They have a meal together and that father blesses his children and he might say something like this, son, you're not an ordinary uh, man. You're not an ordinary boy. You're my son. I love you. I'm proud of you. You're a delight to me. You're a pleasure to me. And son, you're connected by covenant to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Don't you ever forget that. And because of that, you can expect to prosper in everything you do. You can expect to be at the top of your class in school. You can expect that you'll prosper in your career, in your future. You can expect God will give you a wonderful wife and you'll have many children and your children will be blessed. They will be healthy. They will be intelligent. They will prosper. But listen. I am getting blessed by what you're saying right now. How would you have liked your father to pray like that? How would you have liked your father to pray like that? I'm going to tell you something. We're going to tell you some amazing keys that are going to open doors and light bulbs are going to go on when we come back. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. Many viewers report testimonies of miracles, signs and wonders, and healings as a result of watching It's Supernatural. I'm 14 years old. This morning, I watched It's Supernatural about angels and warmth poured on me. It made me cry. God healed me of stage four inoperable cancer. It is a real blessing to have It's Supernatural to watch each week. If you've been touched through watching It's Supernatural, share your testimony at sidroth.org forward slash praise. We now return to It's Supernatural. Now, Craig Hill has identified seven critical times that you should be blessed, and many people have missed these. For instance, Craig, at conception, you talk about a blessing. Yeah. Explain. First of all, you were conceived within the protective hedge of the covenant of marriage. Uh, now, in the ancient Hebrew culture, how much chance that you'd be conceived outside of wedlock? Almost no. zero. Today, how much chance you'd be conceived outside of wedlock? Well, it's, it's close to 40% in our general population. In certain uh, particular groups, it's uh, as, as much as 70% in our culture. And uh, secondly, that you would be wanted, that your, your parents would want a child. And uh, today, it's very common that uh, a child would conceive be conceived and parents don't want a child. What would happen if uh, a child is conceived and the parents really did not want a child at that time or didn't even want a child, uh, but they, they weren't willing to abort, but they might have talked about it a lot while the baby is inside the mother. Yeah. Would what, that affect? What many people don't realize is that little children in the womb are very, very sensitive. And they pick up everything emotionally from the mother and even from the father. So they can pick up a huge amount of emotional rejection, even in the womb, uh, where people will struggle for a lifetime with feelings. I don't belong. I shouldn't be here. There's something wrong with me. I'm a mistake. Nobody wants me. Nobody will love me. That's the opposite of what God intended. God intended that every little child, from the very day they're should have feelings on the inside. I belong. I'm supposed to be here. I, I, I'm wanted. You know, this is an amazing thing God told me one time, Sid. Your mother only carried you in the womb for nine months, but God carried you in his spirit for thousands of years. And at just the right moment, he that released you on this earth. That is good. You're not a mistake. God planned for you, even though maybe your mother didn't. Tell me about a single mom that raises a child yeah. doesn't have 
a, 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 a father. Right. The child's raised without the father. You talk so much about the father's blessing. Right. Uh, what happens to that child? Well, you know, the wonderful thing that we always find is redemption in Scripture. And this is the amazing thing. God himself says, I will be a father to the fatherless. God says, I will be a husband to the, hus the one who has no husband. And you know what I've found time and time again, Sid, is that uh, people tell me that when they really understand that and a son or daughter or a single mom says, God, I'm taking you up on your word. You said you would be a father to my son or to my daughter. And the, the natural father is not there. God, would you please do that? That son or daughter has an intimacy with the father that is rare that many other people who don't have a father uh, uh, don't have. And in addition to that, God will send other godly men to come alongside and to, uh, to speak into the life of that son tell, or daughter. Tell me about the single mom that had the five-year-old. I find this almost yeah. hard to believe. Yeah, Wait, I had an incredible experience where I learned about the power of marriage and the protective hedge that a marriage is. A woman came to me and she said, I've got a five-year-old little son and I wonder if you can help me. I said, well, what's the problem? She said, he is full of lust. I said, well, that's a strange thing. Most little five-year-olds I know don't even, uh, they're not even alive to sex. They don't even know it exists. She said, well, not my son. He is full of lust. He touches other, other little children his age in sexual inappropriate ways. Uh, he even he touch, touches, touches grown adults adult in inappropriate ways. And she said, there isn't a week that this doesn't is, go no by way. that uh, I don't receive I a call from his teacher or principal at school. And he's done inappropriate things. And we've prayed for him. Our pastor's prayed for him. He's been seeing a psychiatrist for three months. And, and uh, nothing has changed. Can you help me? Well, as I began to pray, I heard the Holy Spirit say, just start at the beginning of his life. So I asked this woman, can you tell me how your son was conceived? She said, well, as she began to weep, she said that was actually a very immoral time in my life. Uh, even the night when he was conceived, I was with more than one man. I'm not even sure which one uh, probably was his father. She said that continued for another few months and then I met Messiah, gave my life to him. I was delivered from the lust, never been involved in that lifestyle again. My son's never been molested or, or, or violated in any way. I don't know where he could have gotten this. And as she shared that, I heard the father say, that little boy was demonized by a spirit of lust at the very moment of conception. And I thought, God, that's unfair. That isn't right. That shouldn't happen to anybody. And uh, that's when I heard the father say, son, for the first time you understand the law of Moses. I thought, the law of Moses? I was thinking back, oh, capital punishment for fornication. I thought, God, that's so severe. If we applied that today, there wouldn't be hardly anybody left to be alive. And I said, God, how, uh, wh why was that so severe? And I heard the father say, son, that wasn't my severity. That was my mercy for the children. Because in that society, there was no little child that would be conceived without a protective hedge of marriage because everybody had it. I shared that with this woman and she began to weep. She said, well, I, I did I that. I, I opened the door for my son. What can I do? And I said, well, the bad news is you did open the door and you created a situation where there was no protection for your son because the covenant of marriage is that protection. And uh, yes, he's been demonized, but here's the good news. Jesus Christ Jesus died. Christ. His, His blood was shed to break the power of that because that lust is a curse. Is That's a not a blessing. And um, you open the door, you have, you have authority to close it. And uh, I said, here's what I want you to do. You and your husband bring your son in here to your pastor and, uh, and you renounce the iniquity of lust that actually, as I talked to her more, discovered it had been passed down from several generations. She wasn't the first one to open that door. I said, you break the power of that uh, iniquity of lust, renounce it and release it to the cross of Messiah. And then, exchange that for the purity that Jesus died to purchase for you and for your son. And then you release that blessing upon your son and then you speak the demonic spirit, command it to leave in the name of Yeshua and it will go. I came back two months later to that city. This woman came running up to me with a five-year-old little boy with her and she said, remember me? And I didn't, but she began to share the story and I said, oh, now I remember you. 
And uh, she said, uh, you wouldn't believe what happened. We did what you said. And when we commanded that demonic spirit to go, she said, instantly it left. She burst into tears and she said, I got my son back. I got my son back. He's a normal five-year-old little boy. Listen to this. If you know the truth, the truth will set you free in any area. Nothing is hopeless in Jesus. Study the truth book, the Bible. Do what it says. Watch the victory. Did you know that you were created to be God's agent to speak supernatural blessings over your children and grandchildren? Children blessed by their parents prosper in their adult lives. Children who are not often struggle with a lifetime of feelings of inadequacy, emotional disorders, and failure. Craig Hill wants to show you how to pray blessings over your children and grandchildren. Call right now to get Craig Hill's anointed book, The Power of a Parent's Blessing, and this two audio CD set, Soaking Up the Father's Blessing. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9182. Through this book, you will discover seven critical times in your children's lives when you should bless them. Understand the supernatural power of the Jewish Sabbath family blessing. Begin to pray supernatural prayers to break every curse over your children's and grandchildren's past. Learn actual prayers of blessing to declare over your children that will transform their health, finances, their relationships, and help them fulfill their God-given destiny and purpose. I've seen marriages healed. I've seen people's physical bodies healed. I've seen people healed on the inside, people that have had a feeling, I, I'm not loved. I have no valuable, instantaneously changed when they learned how to receive an impartation of the Father's blessing. The book includes a blessing toolbox with action steps and anointed prayers to break every curse and decree God's blessing over your children during every stage of their life from conception to later years. Included are prayers of repentance to cover the times when you weren't able to pray blessings over your children as they grew up. These prayers of repentance allow you to effectively redeem the past for God's glory in your child's life. Through this two-part audio CD set, you will receive an impartation and dynamic insight into the power of the Father's blessings. From 14 highly anointed fathers in the faith, including Sid Roth, Dr. Gary Whetstone, Tony Kemp, Stephen Brooks, Mahesh Chavda, Leif Hetland, and so many more. And when you hear that CD series, you're going to receive a supernatural impartation of blessing that'll come into your life, that will eradicate those lies, that will eliminate curses that may have been stuck deep down on the inside of your heart for years and years. We've seen it over and over and over again. People's lives radically change. Whether you are a parent, grandparent, or step parent, these powerful prayers of blessings will help your children to prosper and walk in the supernatural power of God. Don't miss out on getting Craig Hill's anointed book, The Power of a Parent's Blessing, and this two audio CD set, Soaking Up the Father's Blessing. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9182. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9182 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. Next week on It's Supernatural. Have you ever heard of white hair instantly turning brown? I'm looking forward to that. How about instant supernatural weight loss? Or how about money materializing, even multiplying?